Learning how to shoot handheld well can reduce the need for several other way higher priced movement tools. I've done large branded projects almost entirely handheld. Major scenes and feature documentaries, and guess what? Learning proper handheld, one of the lowest cost ways that you can elevate your filmmaking. Yet, not many of us really take the time to develop our skills in how to shoot handheld. So in this video, I'll take you through the main reasons why and where you should be considering handheld filmmaking. How handheld filmmaking relates back to, the most important thing, story, and I'll give you my top five tips for getting better handheld footage right away. Okay, before we get hands on, let's take a second to make sure we're clear on the why. As in why and where you should consider handheld filmmaking. First, it's fast. Nothing is quicker than being able to just pick up a camera and get right into the action. That speed is gonna allow you to stay proactive in front of the action. Slow setup times and bigger tools can often mean that you miss things or a moment becomes forced and fake because you're asking people to, can you hold on, just wait a second, I'm almost ready, you know, that kind of thing. It never turns out well. Now, second, handheld filmmaking is flexible. As you'll see through the various techniques we're gonna cover, mastering handheld allows you to get shots that are fast and frenetic or slow and smooth. You can mimic a monopod, a slider. You can shoot from high or low. It's great in really tight spaces. Third, my personal favorite and why I love shooting handheld so much is that it lets you be one with the camera. Yeah, 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 it's a bit philosophical, but by that I mean that you can feel a moment happening and you can let that story come through you and how you move the camera. And lastly, these two things are some of the cheapest camera tools out there. All you need are your two hands and some solid technique and you can create quite a few looks and add some tools to your filmmaking. Okay, we're gonna dive into the five techniques in just a second. These techniques will help you shoot better handheld and get a variety of shots. But that brings up the question of what type of shot or what type of movement is best and most fitting for your story in your film. And here's what we'd ask you to consider. How you move your camera is how you move your audience. Fast and shaky, it can feel very raw and make the audience feel uneasy. But slow and smooth can feel serene and peaceful. And then in between, you know, subtle movement, they can feel very human, like the way we experience the world through our eyes every day. I know y'all love your drones and your gimbal, sometimes a little too much. And here's the problem, a poorly timed drone or gimbal shot, as in one that lacks intention, it can pull your audience way out of the story. You can lose them just like that. I should be able to snap, I can't, like that. Producer, cut me. I know, like that. You can lose them just like that, that, like that. And drones and gimbals are more accessible than ever, so guess what, these fancy shots, they're not gonna set you apart anymore. What we need is great storytelling and strong visual language, intention. That's what's gonna help you break through with your films. With that, let's dive into the top five techniques for improving your handheld. Let's start over here with the X-T5. What we want to do is be aware of our arms and our hand position. We want to keep the camera close to our body and look to increase the number of contact points. This is really poor handheld technique. It's far from my body and I've only got one contact point. Whereas on a smaller camera, I'd look to hold it close to me with my right hand and have my left hand supporting the camera and on focus if I'm doing manual focus. Now, if you can get your wrist on the bottom of the camera, that's another contact point, one, two, and three. Now, for heavier and larger cameras, I love to hold the majority of the weight in my right hand. That's why I love this handle right here. And then the left arm goes underneath the camera. So between the two of them, I've got two contact points and I can still keep my fingers on the focus. So I can move around and you'll see I'll push this into my body another contact point, and it's nice and smooth. I can do this for a long period, and I can focus at the same time. Sometimes, I'll even use my chin as another contact point. Yeah, yeah, you like that? <laughs> the chin as another contact point, it's gonna be great to get closer to a tripod or a monopod for longer shots where you might have to hold for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Now, when it comes to moving well handheld, this is where it's key to master the walk. 
I first learned the walk when I took Steadicam training. Even with this large rig with a big camera arm coming out, how you walk makes a real difference. And the way we were taught to walk is that you need to keep your legs slightly bent, right? A built-in shock absorber. And then two, you walk from heel to toe, heel to toe. You're rolling your feet. If you put these together, bending your legs and rolling your feet from heel to toe, you're gonna get much smoother handheld footage while walking. Okay, number three. Now, modern cameras have come a long way with helping us to get better handheld. So with this camera, it's got more weight and therefore inertia, meaning it's easier to keep it fairly steady. Just holding it like this, you can see that it's fairly steady. Whereas if I try and do the same thing with a lighter camera, it's, it's gonna be shakier. That's where optical image stabilization comes in. It's becoming standard on smaller cameras like these. Different manufacturers might call it different things, but the key here is that we're talking about stabilization happening inside your lens or in and around the sensor. And that stabilization is removing much of that shake in real time. Now this isn't digital that we're talking about. Your camera is compensating for the movement to keep the sensor or the lens element steady. Now here, the new Fujifilm X-T5, stabilization off versus optical stabilization on. Now, technique number four is to understand the role of digital stabilization. Digital as opposed to optical. This is where we're gonna use the resolution of your image to stabilize the shot. And in doing so, you're gonna be cropping in and losing some of the edges of your image. A camera like the Sony FX3 lets you turn on digital stabilization and optical. You can choose which or both. They call it active track in the menu. They call it active mode in the menu. I forgot to research what they call it, but Sony loves to call their things crazy stuff. It just means digital stabilization. Note when I turn on this active mode, the image crops in, the camera is gonna use the extra resolution around the sides of your image to do the stabilization work. Now, take a look at walking with active stabilization on. Big difference from regular handheld. And this allows you to move even quicker and stay fairly steady. Now, if your camera doesn't have this digital stabilization, guess what? You're in luck. It's built into software like Premiere, which calls it Warp Stabilizer, or just Stabilize in DaVinci Resolve. Same mechanics though. You're going to use the extra resolution in the footage and the edges to crop in and get smoother footage. Here's some shots we recently did at Four Seasons Bali that were just a little too shaky for the story. You had a quick Warp Stabilizer and all set. True story, the client actually said, can you clean those up? Now. Point five for better handheld filmmaking. Uh-oh, Tristan's like that. It's okay, he hasn't listened to this tutorial yet. Now, point five for better handheld filmmaking is to remember how your lens choice, the focal length, relates to how the footage feels. A longer lens, a telephoto, such as an 85 or this one, which is a 150, is gonna be much harder to get smooth handheld footage because your field of view is so small, and so any movement is gonna be easier to see. Whereas a 35 millimeter, what I have on here, is far more appropriate for handheld footage. Generally, we'd recommend sticking to about 70 millimeters or below for handheld, in most cases. You're gonna to wanna to consider a tripod or a monopod or another tool if you're getting into an 85, 135 or something like a 7200. Doesn't mean it can't be done, but it's generally not going to offer the best results in most situations. Okay, final tip is to realize that shooting off speed, slow motion, it's a powerful way to turn your handheld footage into something that's more like a dolly move. We'll often shoot at 60 frames a second and hold the camera close and lean with our body as a way of getting that slider like reveal. Ensure, <laughs> ensure you have some foreground and move with the camera. One of my favorite shots from our documentary, The New Hustle, was a handheld push-in on the founder, Melanie Perkins, as she blew bubbles. This was shot at 96 frames with a camera like this and it was super smooth due to that high frame rate. But I got the shot by literally just going like that really quick. Okay, bringing this all together. There's the technique side of keeping the camera close to your body and adding contact points. Then there's learning the walk, where we're gonna bend our legs and we're gonna roll from heel to toe, heel to toe. Do this with a lens that's appropriate for handheld, such as a 35 millimeter, and you're already gonna get much better results. Now, if you wanna add in optical stabilization, you're gonna get even smoother handheld footage. And then, if you must, you can still clean it up in post by using digital stabilization that's built into most editing software these days. As you get more comfortable with all of this, you can start experimenting with moving your body in 
different ways and using slow motion to get super smooth dolly-like shots. Learn to do this well and you're gonna be shocked to find that you can shoot a large budget commercial or a documentary project and lean heavily on your handheld work. Now it's always about story, so remember, how you move the camera is how you move your viewer. Now, if this has helped you, hitting that like button, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a comment, that's the fuel that helps us make more time and devote the resources to bring you more content like this. And I'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite way of moving your camera? Ooh, not the elbow into the red. That's not my favorite. Are you handheld junkie like I am, or do you have a different tool that is kind of your go-to? Alrighty, my friends, it's time for you to get out there and tell it with intent.